Okay, so we're on to step five where we're calculating voltage drop. Here's the formula we're going to use below here. And let's have a look at our two circuits where we're up to for now. So we've calculated our design current for each. We've selected our protected device rating. We've calculated our IZ. And we've checked that it's lower than the IT, the tabulated value. Quick example of that just so we understand what we've done. We selected a one mil cable for our lighting circuit. Okay? Because we needed to select a cable that could take at least seven amps which we did, didn't we? We went in that table and we selected one mil because one mil could take 13 amps. So that's the tabulated value, 13 amps. Look over here, IT has to be greater or equal to IZ. IZ was the current carrying capacity of the cable in the conditions it's gonna be in, seven amps. And IT is the tabulated value for this actual cable that we choose, which is 13 amps. So we're happy with those selections on each side, aren't we? So now let's move on to the next slide and we'll go through this now voltage drop okay so you'll notice this is the same table that we just selected our cable sizes from didn't we because this is table 4d5 for 70 degree thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable which is what we're using for both of these circuits isn't it right and this is from table 4d5 in bs7671 the big brown book and we've also got this down here from the on-site guide the appendix f which is a bit of information about voltage drop okay so let's look at this first anyway. Before, what we did, we went down this column here, didn't we? We went reference method B, because we're in conduit or trunking, and we went down to 13 amps. Yeah, we needed our cable for the lighting circuit to be able to take seven amps. So we went here, didn't we? And we went 13 amps is what we'll do. And we went across and selected our cable size, which was one mil there. Okay, so when we're on this table, we can stay here and we can get our millivolt amp per meter value, which is what we need for our voltage drop calculation here, don't we, part of it. So when we've selected one mil, we can come across and we can get in this side of the table down here, we can actually select our millivolt amp per meter rating, which in this case is 44. Okay, so for our lighting circuit, it's 44 millivolt amps per meter. Let's leave it there and we're just gonna come back to that in a minute. Now let's do the second one, so for the second circuit, we went down, didn't we? And we needed a cable that could take at least 21 amps. So we chose 23 here, went across, and that meant we were selecting a 2.5 mil cable. And then same situation again, we keep scrolling to the last column, which is voltage drop per ampere per meter. And then if we look, we get a value of 18. So we're gonna select these values in a minute and go and input these into the formula. Well, let's go down here for a sec. This is really important, this bit here. So this is always in your on-site guide, this, isn't it? And this is how to calculate the voltage drop, okay? So you don't need to remember this. This is always in there. This is always there. What we do need to be aware of is this bit at the bottom, the maximum voltage drop, okay, for lighting and for power circuits. Let's read here just in case we forget this. The requirements of 7671 are deemed to be satisfied if voltage drop between the origin of the installation and a lighting point does not exceed 3% of the nominal voltage. So basically, from the start to the end of our circuit, we need the voltage drop to, be let, not, to not exceed 3%. Okay, so, and the same for, and carry on, so for power circuits, which is gonna be something feeding socket outlets, for example, or current using equipment, we can't exceed 5%. So I've wrote it down here just to make it clear for you. But let's write something down here, which is interesting. So for lights, 3% of 230 volts, because that's our supply voltage, isn't it? We can't exceed 6.9 volts as our voltage drop, 6.9 volts. And for our radial circuit, which is feeding the sockets, we can't exceed 5%, which is 11.5 volts. So it's always good to write those down as voltages. It's just a little bit easier to actually see visually when you do these calculations. So we're gonna calculate these and it's gonna give us a value in volts. And we're gonna check that it's lower than these amounts, okay? So here's our formula again down here that we're gonna go for. And then now let's work our way through this. And let's go for it on this side. Let's do the lighting circuit first. So. Following our formula, let's find out a little bit. So millivolt amps per meter for this circuit. So millivolt amps per meter for this circuit is gonna be 44. Okay, let's put that there. And we've got the length, which is equal to what? 45 meters, okay, perfect. And then our design current for this circuit, okay, was 1.04 amps. Fine, right. So let's put that into our formula now just so we can see what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do, aren't we, the voltage drop, the voltage drop is gonna be equal to 
the millivolt amp per meter value, 44, multiplied by the length, which is 45, multiplied by the design current, which is 1.04. And we're going to divide all of that by 1000. Okay, and that's going to give us a value of 2.05 volts. Okay, so let's look now. Lighting circuit, the voltage drop for what we've designed here is 2.05 volts. Is that compliant? Yes, because it's lower than 3% of the supply voltage voltage drop. So it's less than 6.9 volts. So we're happy to say that that is a compliant circuit so far. Right, let's do this side now. So let's go again. So the millivolt amps per meter value for this one is what? Is 18. 18, okay. And then the length of our circuit for this radial circuit is 20 meters. And the design current for this circuit was 16 amps, wasn't it? That was our assumed load, 16 amps. Right, perfect. So let's put a line straight across there. Let's go for this now. So voltage drop is going to be equal to 18 millivolt amps per meter value multiplied by the length, which is 20 meters multiplied by the design current which is 16 amps then we're going to divide all that by 1000 okay and that's going to give us a value of 5.76 volts so let's go back over here and check that that is lower than five percent of the supply voltage yes five percent of the supply voltage will be 11.5 volts and we have got a voltage drop on our circuit of 5.76 volts so we're happy to say that that is a compliant circuit up to now. Brilliant. So let's move on to the next step.